right? So today uh, we're going to continue on our lesson, the dark arts. Uh, this is going to be talking about uh, a lot of occulting stuff and all that. Uh, again, like I said last week, a lot of people don't think we need to be talking about this, but I can promise you, like I said last week, every single last one of you guys here has had some kind of touch with the occult. Okay, maybe not be you, uh, you know, dabbling in it, but it could be somebody who was near you or around you. Okay, something has happened to you where this has touched you, especially this right here. Uh, all questions, comments, and complaints will be after the Bible study. There's a paper. Oh, well, we the also pain. have uh, these here. <laughs> Joe, if you want to spread these out. So we miss so you, Joe. Anybody who wants to take notes, please raise your hand and Joe will give you a pen and a little piece of, a little note card. Um, so, this is going to be part three. And you will have questions. Yes. Uh, another thing, this is going to be a little bit, if I'm going too fast, please stop me. Okay, please stop me because this is an advanced thing where I'm just trying for everybody to get the understanding of what's going on here. All right. Uh, dark Arts, Part 3, Alchemy and Pharmacia. Anybody heard those words before? Yeah. Alchemy and Pharmacia? Okay. So, uh, while Joe's passing those out, I'm just going to go ahead and move on. 1 Peter 5.8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Everybody understands that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That means you got to be watching. Okay, in Spanish it says keep doing it. Okay, look over your shoulder. You be watching. Don't don't let the devil catch you sleeping because he will. Okay, he's watching always. The Bible says to and fro. I never understood why some people always would brag about which city was the more violent. I met a guy from Chicago talking about Chi Town. That's man, that's it. That's like Iraq. You bragging about how horrible and how the devil has deceived the people in your city. You know, there was Roman to and fro. He's all over. Definition of alchemy. A medieval chemical science and speculative philosophy aiming to achieve, achieve the transmutation of the base metals into gold, the discovery of a universal cure for disease, and the discovery of a means of indefinitely prolonging life. Okay, let me break this down. The meaning to alchemy, the first meaning, is the old, old chemical science. Okay? Uh, one of the goals of alchemy was to take things, you know, base metals like uh, copper and lead and then turn it into gold. Alright? Because, you know, everybody wants more gold. Another thing was to find a universal cure for disease and discover a way so that we could all live forever. Right? I mean, you all know the only way to live forever is by Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah, amen. amen. Second meaning, a power or process that changes or transforms something in a mysterious or impressive way. So basically, transformation in a way that you don't really understand, but it's interesting. It's impressive. Galatians 5.20. These are things that God is telling us to stay away from. Okay, the Bible is very serious about these things. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy. Uh, idolatry, don't go foreign after other guys. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Witchcraft, we're going to get into that in a minute. Hatred, don't keep bitterness in your heart against your family members, against your neighbor, okay? Amen. Against people in your church, Amen. okay? You need to learn to let things go, all right? Variance, don't change the gospel. Do not take the simple message of the gospel and start twisting it for your own uh, benefit. Emulations, don't try to look like the world. Okay, the world don't got nothing special. Okay? Don't try to look like it. Wrath. Don't try to always be trying to get back at somebody. Okay? You live your life, your entire life you, to get back at people, you'll receive nothing. Okay? Strife, fighting, don't be causing fighting. Sedition, don't cause separation in groups, in families, and friends. Heresy, again, don't lie about the Bible. Don't lie, don't use the Bible. Witchcraft. In the Greek text, witchcraft is translated to pharmakia. Anybody ever heard uh, a word like pharmakia before? Pharmaceuticals, pharmacy. Okay. The phonetic spelling, pharmakia. If anybody didn't get it. Definition, magic, sorcery, or enchantment. That's what it means. Okay. Pharmacy, 
originally, that's what this word meant. Magic, sorcery, or enchantment. Alchemy is the art of transformation and an ancient science that helped develop modern medicine and chemistry. The theory's laboratory techniques are still recognizable to this day. Even though it is considered early science by many, it's different because it includes hermetic principles and practices related to mythology, religion, spirituality. It was, pra it was the practice of transmuting energy, consciousness, and matter. Okay, a lot of people nowadays look at alchemy like early science. This is how science started off. But the difference is, while now science has almost nothing to do with spiritual world, right? Nothing to do. Back then, those two were intertwined. As a matter of fact, you couldn't tell the difference between the two. All right? And alchemy had a lot to do with the mythology, the Greek gods, the religion of the people in the area, and the spirituality. All right? Transmuting energy, consciousness, and matter. Basically, what makes us us. How can we uh, make something the way we were made? Okay? And how can we do that vice versa? In ancient times, the alchemists were mainly interested in the field of science and medicine. The essence, the essence of medicine is transformation. The alchemists would transform poisons and any inerrant organic substances into potions and medicines which were suitable in bringing forth beneficial healing or transformation into the organism. So early alchemists, the guys who did this alchemy did, a lot of them wanted to be doctors because they saw that that was the best way they could practice their beliefs, they practiced that uh, that ritual or that, you know, study. Uh, so when you talk, even nowadays, most doctors are doctors of medicine. You know what I'm saying? They're not doctors of just all well-being and health. There are some osteopathic doctors, and those guys, they treat the entire body, but a lot of times, the doctors of medicine, they you have to leave with some type of medicine. Okay? They can't just let you come in, and then you leave empty-handed, because they leave empty-pocketed. Right? Uh, and so back then, they would take roots, herbs, minerals, they would mix them together, they would do these different uh, ingredients and rituals with them, and they were the first ones to find out that we can use these herbs to bring a beneficial change in somebody, in their mind or in their body. Everybody understand? Uh, Isaiah 19.3. And the spirit of Egypt shall fall in the midst thereof. I will destroy the council thereof, and they shall speak to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards. Egyptians are some of the most messed up people I have ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know any Egyptians nowadays. I'm pretty sure there's some pretty awesome dudes. But back then they had some issues, okay? Uh, they all, In these Bible studies, they're always coming up. We always have something. God always has a complaint with the uh, Egyptians. Always. And it's like, whatever God says don't do, they do the exact opposite of that. Okay, don't enslave people. They enslave God's very people. Okay? Don't go after other gods. They make 400 other gods. This alchemical tradition is based on the philosophy of Hermeticism, which was founded by the Egyptian philosopher King Hermes Trimegistus. Many alchemists equate him with the Greek god Hermes or Mercury and take his staff with intertwined winged serpents as their symbol. This is a Greek god, okay? Uh, Greek god named Hermes or Mercury, whatever you want to call him. Does anybody recognize that staff? Anybody recognize where it's from? Right? In the side of an ambulance, you see it. In the hospitals, you see it. In the medical alert bracelets, okay? In almost any... Uh, medicinal emblem, that thing is there. There's a reason it is. Alchemy transmutes energy to matter and vice versa, but secretly transmuted the ancient gods or goddesses into the human body. In other words, brought demons into the human body, bringing the non-physical into the physical world. All right? Uh, we don't really think about it, but what do these drugs that we take really do? What do they really do to our your body? In the physical, we can feel their effects, but in the spiritual, what are they doing? I've seen many people with supposed yeah. ADHD. Right. They bouncing off the walls. Okay? You give them a ball, you give them a spanking, they'll shut up for a little while. Alright? But you start
start putting them on these medicines. They're like a zombie. This one girl, I knew she was all bad mouths and all running all over the place. They gave her this medicine. She was like, like the walking dead. Okay. Uh, even like wandering around like that. They found her one day just wandering around the streets at night. Okay. <laughs> Psychiatric drugs bring side effects which are uncontrollable body functions or actions. As a result of mind-altering chemicals, spiritually this can be an entrance to these ancient gods or goddesses by submitting to these alchemical entities. When drugs are taken, you have no self-control and must right. let these chemicals work through you, allowing the presence of these entities. A lot of people say, it's just the pharmaceutical, okay? It's just the drug, right? But why is it? The original science that founded this, it was based on a spiritual awakening. It was based on a spiritual transformation, a spiritual change. Again, I'm not saying it's all bad, okay? You can go and you can take painkillers if you want. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? If you get a boo-boo, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm talking about psychiatric drugs. Something to be really, really careful about, all right? Because Exactly. Be really careful with that because these drugs target your brain, your mind. And what does your mind do? Your mind guides you. Revelations 18.23 And the light of a can of candles shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall stand no more at all in thee. For thy merchants, merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. When you under the influence of drugs, there is no Holy Spirit working in you. No? Everybody understand that, right? Amen. Uh, there is no happiness really in you. I mean, I remember I used to get high and I used to do all this, you know, stupid stuff. Uh, and I felt great. I felt amazing. You know, people were like, why do you stop doing drugs? Did you, like, not like how you became when you were on drugs? They were like, no, I love myself when I was on drugs. There's other people that had a problem. Okay? But that's the thing we got to be careful of, okay? Because there's really something to it, we got to study, we got to learn. This guy here uh, is uh, Pablo Escobar. How many people know about Pablo Escobar? Right? Biggest drug, one of the biggest drug dealers to ever exist on planet Earth. Okay, this dude was a billionaire. Four, five hundred big. Huge. Okay, a lot of people in uh, Colombia, Peru, and all these places around here, they look to him like a Robin Hood. Yeah. But he was a murderer. Yeah. He killed innocent women, children, men, police officers. And a lot of times he would say it's for the struggle of the people, but he actually did it in order so that he could sell his drugs, peddle his poison. That's why he did it. It didn't have nothing to do with the people. And he showed his true colors later on. Uh, but going back to happiness and drugs, let's say you are a pretty relative happy person. On a scale of 1 to 10, you're a 7. Smoke the weed. Okay, you go up to 20, 20% 20 happy, I'm feeling great. Once you get off that, you go down to 6. But you was at 7 before, so you went back to 6. You smoke weed again, go back to 20. You come back, you have 6. Smoke it again, go back to 20, come down, you have 5. And so on and so forth. The more you do, the more it takes away that happiness, that joy that we were all instilled with, okay? When you take these drugs, it releases that dopamine in your mind. Everything you like to do, music, food, uh, hanging out with your friends, with your family, it releases a little bit of dopamine so that we can enjoy our life. When you do these drugs, it opens up that sack of dopamine and all of it spills out so that you can't regenerate that same chemical over and over again or the same amount, sometimes never, okay? That's why a lot of people on drugs aren't the most happiest people on earth, all right? In the second decade of the 21st century, alchemy is not only about the transmutation of metals, but the shift in consciousness. That returns us from the physical to the non-physical, okay? I mean, playing the two sides of the fence, spiritual, non-spiritual. Throughout history, alchemy has a dual nature. One, it has involved the use of chemical substances, and so is claimed by the history of science as the precursor of modern chemistry. Okay, even the word chemistry, okay, rooted in alchemy. Yet, at the same time, alchemy has throughout history also been associated with esoteric spiritual beliefs. This original science, all right, was in occultism, mysticism. Uh, of her 
Hermeticism and is a proper subject for the historian of religious thought, which can correlate alchemical symbolism with the development of psycho-religious life of the individual. A lot like this symbol that we just saw, that staff of Hermes, all right? Now that's a symbol of well-being, a symbol of a hospital, okay? Symbol of all your chakras and all that stuff is working, all your mojos going together perfectly. That it originally came from this alchemy belief, belief in different gods and how to harness their power and their enlightenment. The Egyptians all over again. Alchemy was practiced in Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, Persia, India, Japan, Korea, China, in classical Greece, and in Rome, and in the Muslim civilization, and then in Europe up to the 19th century in a complex network of schools and philosophical systems spanning at least 2,500 years. So all the smart dudes back then, all the philosophical guys that you see on the History Channel now, this is what they practiced, all right? There wasn't just, uh, you know, studying the wind and the earth. They was also mixing these different chemicals and doing rituals along with them to bring forth more beneficial healing. In the history of science, alchemy refers to both an early form of the investigation of nature and an early philosophical and spiritual discipline, both combining elements of chemistry, metallurgy, physics, meta, uh, medicine, astrology, semiotics, mysticism, and spiritualism, and art as all parts of one greater force. Isn't that weird? Back then, the people who made change were the everyday people. They were the soldiers. They were the workers. They were the preachers. Okay, they were the generals. Nowadays, you start noticing a lot of the people who got something to say is on a TV screen. Why is Mark Wahlberg telling me how to live my life? Okay? Why is Kesha telling me how to find peace? Why is Shakira telling me to love all these different people? Okay, why is it the person who has an opinion of what supposedly Jesus Christ is, is paid to lie, paid to sing about some craziness? Alchemy is an ancient path of spiritual purification and transformation, an expansion of consciousness and the development of insight and intuition through images. Okay? They try to transform the human body through these different images, change the way the brain waves move in your mind. <coughs> Alchemy is steeped in mysticism and mystery. It presents to the initiate a system of eternal dream-like esoteric symbols that have the power to alter consciousness and connect the human soul to the divine. Let me explain this again for the people who weren't here. When God created us, he created us with a spirit, a little s. And the Holy Spirit is a big s. Right? Okay? Okay? We were made to connect directly into Big S. Okay? Well, what happened? We fell. We messed up. So now we're no longer plugged in to Big S. So the only way we can plug into Big S, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, the true power, the truth, is to receive the gospel, is to worship, is to take the time to take that time with Jesus, take that time with God. That's how you reconnect yourself back into that socket. These guys were taking their socket and plugging it into ancient gods and learning from them how to, like we learn from everybody, okay? The Bible tells us how to eat, right? It tells us how to eat good foods. It tells us what we can eat, what we can't eat. It tells us uh, how to live good lives. They had the same thing. Their gods were instructing them on the potions and them in the medicinal leaves and all this kind of different stuff. They wanted to connect to different gods. It is part of the mystical and mystery traditions of both East and West. In the West, it dates to ancient Egypt, where adepts first developed it as an early form of chemistry and metallurgy. Egyptians, al Egyptians alchemists used their art to make aloes, dyes, perfumes, and cosmetic jewelry, and to embalm the dead. So, one of the uses of alchemy for the Egyptians was to just make little trinkets, make different types of metals, okay, make the uh, dye for clothes, and perfume. The early Arabs made significant contributions to alchemy, such as by emphasizing the mysticism of numbers, quantities, and length of time for process. So they were the original guys who said, let's take these chemicals, mix them together, and study them and see what they do over time. Okay, they were the original guys who used time as a process for their potion. The Arabs also gave us the term alchemy from the Arabic term alchemia, which loosely translated, translated means the Egyptian art. 
Again, Egyptians, man, they got some issues. During medieval and oh, and all these pictures you're seeing are from old uh, alchemy journals, old Catholic journals, old uh, Renaissance journals. Okay. During medieval and Renaissance times, the alchemy spread through the Western world and was further developed by Kabbalists. Kabbalists are people who took the belief in Judaism and made it occultic. Okay, they're the ones who put the Star of David on the flag. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's widely known by everybody, but David didn't necessarily have a symbol. Okay? So, I don't really know how it was connected, because it wasn't, wasn't mentioned in the Bible. Okay? But, we'll talk about that later. Uh, it was also by Rosicrucians. That's a secret society and a religion. Astrologers and other occultists. It functioned on two levels. Mundane and spiritual. On a mundane level, alchemists sought to find a physical process to convert base metals such as lead into gold. On the spiritual level, alchemists work to purify themselves by eliminating the base material of the self and achieving the goals of enlightenment. Just like uh, some people want to you know, make coal into diamonds and all these things, like lead into gold, all right? They wanted to take the base material, us, which is of this earth, and turn it into an enlightened being that we know all, we see all, and we understand the secrets of the universe and all that other fruity stuff. Uh, by Renaissance times, many alchemists believed that the spiritual purification was necessary in order to achieve the mundane transformation of metal. So they believed that the only way you could really uh, get far in this practice was by having a spiritual awakening. Because if you don't have a spiritual awakening, how would you receive new ideas for potions and tonics and uh, how to mix metals and all this stuff? Alchemists relied heavily upon their dreams, inspirations, and visions for guidance in perfecting their art. In order to protect their secrets, they recorded diaries filled with mysterious symbols rather than text. These symbols remained exceptionally potent for changing states of consciousness. Alright, these guys, just like God gives us dreams and visions, right? Amen? We get dreams and visions from God. Sometimes it's because we ate pizza too late in the night. Sometimes it's because God is trying to tell us something. Alright? Now, while we take those dreams and visions that we get, and God, over time, he explains it to us, he tells us something that's going on in the future, something going on in the past, these guys did the same thing, only they were all open to dreams. All right? When Christian is open to dreams, they need to guide it by the word. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right. These guys, they were so open, anything could have ran into their mind. Okay, they could have had a dream that they were the a pink unicorn and flying through Asia and they would have thought it was some symbolic meaning. Okay? But they would get symbols in their dreams and in their visions when they would take these potions and you do these rituals. And a lot of the rich the symbols you see here on this uh gentleman here is things that they would come up with. Alright? It seems basic like basic things. Alright? By themselves a symbol could be just a symbol. Alright? Like I was explaining to my mom the other day, if you're walking down the street and you see a glass like a water glass on the floor, you go on anywhere. You don't know. So if you walk into somebody's house and you see that same glass, you know who it belongs to. It belongs to the person who occupies that house. So you know if it's if it's not it doesn't have any intent behind it. Okay? Little necklaces or rings or symbols, it might not mean anything. Okay? So we have to be real careful when we find out the sources of these different symbols. Alchemy is a form of speculative thought that, among other aims, tries to transform base metals such as lead and copper into silver or gold. They're big on gold and silver. They want their blingage. And to discover a cure for disease and a way of extending life. They wanted to live forever. All right? Like Dracula. Alchemist was a name given in Latin Europe in the 12th century to an aspect of thought that corresponds with, to astrology which is apparently an older tradition. I mean, no, astrology was here in the very first day when God created us. Yeah, okay? When he created us, there was a story being told in the stars. Some people took it to uh, understand creation. Other people took it to make up new gods because they were mad with the, the real God. Uh, and both represent a, attempts to discover the relationship of man to the cosmos and exploit the relationship to his benefit. They didn't want to find out who was the true and living God. Because if they did, they would have found out who it was, right? 
They wanted to find out who it is so that they can use that power, that knowledge, for self gain, for selfish ambition. Amen? How many people know somebody who came to church and everybody thought, man, this person has a big problem in their life. They came to church and they left soon. And you find out that while well, they was in church, they was doing all this kind of craziness. Well, they came to church because they wanted the blessing. They wanted the $500 line. They wanted the blessing from God to shower down upon them. They wasn't really looking for congregating with people of the same thought, the same beliefs to grow more spiritually. They just wanted, uh, you know, the televangelist thing, you know, some Ernest Angley kind of stuff. The first of these objectives may be called scientific, the second technological. This belief, this practice was brought on so that they could make new science, okay? Make new medicines, make new potions, and so it can bring, like I said before, beneficial healing to the body, transform things that are spiritual in the body to the physical world. Now, the second is technological. They wanted to make new technology, okay? There's a lot of drawings in ancient Egypt where it's showing airplanes, okay? Showing helicopters, all right? UFOs. Now, I'm not, when I say UFOs, I don't mean ET. I'm talking about un, unidentified flying objects. Things that you see flying in the air, you don't know what it is. Okay? That's a UFO. It doesn't always mean, you know, little green dude walking around trying to probe people. Okay? Because that's what they wanted. They wanted a society where they could practice this openly and they could actually be the wise men. Now, we're going to bring it to this you know, base point. The frontal lobe, every part of the anatomy is used almost all the time. God knew what he was doing when he created it. Your frontal lobe is very important. It is the part of the brain that allows us to make decisions. It is the part of the brain that forms personality. It allows us to plan. It's where many moral guidelines are instilled. It is also where the gospel and God's way is put Okay, when you receive the new knowledge from, of God, the wisdom of God, it's stored right there in your frontal lobe. It, the frontal lobe is your guardian, and it keeps a strong mind strong against all mental threats, including the devil's temptation. All right? How many people, when they first came to Christ, they were really struggling with this one thing? And then after learning, after growing, after congregating, it changed. There was a shift. You know what I'm saying? That was that frontal lobe receiving the gospel. Because why? It was instilled in that frontal lobe into your guardian, and it became part of who you were. Marijuana. It disconnects your psyche from your guardian, your frontal lobe. It's true. They did studies, and it bypasses completely your frontal lobe. All right? It opens your mind to accept things against your beliefs and spiritually leaves an entrance for spirits to sway your decisions personality, and moral fiber, okay? That means the person that you are in Christ, under marijuana, you're no longer that person. No. Somebody else is there, all right? And a lot of people say, like, I would talk to a lot of people like, man, I could drive uh, high, but I can't drive drunk. You know, I got full control when I'm high. Well, you don't really, because sit in a chair and stop that high feeling. Get rid of that high feeling by just thinking. You can't do it, okay? When you're doing... Uh, cocaine, heroin, E, any kind of drug, you cannot get rid of the side effect by just thinking of it. All right, you can't. You don't have any control of your body, and in some cases, not even of your, uh, you know, arms, your legs. You're waking up, eating other people. Anybody, everybody heard about that Miami incident where that one guy ate the other guy's face because he was on some drug? All right, they had to shoot the guy, put him down. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I know, the devil is alive. We may give you feelings of happiness and comfort or pleasure, but in chronic users, in chronic users, it causes depression and self-hate, which in the mind of the user can only be cured by more weed, then stronger weed, and finally more powerful drugs. When I was young, like around 13 was the first time that I, uh, and I'm, again, I'm not proud of this, because, you know, but when you're doing wrong, then it's you, it's who you are, you know, you're proud of it. But when you come out of it, you're like, man, I was just so dumb. Man, how could I be just so stupid? You know? That just makes no sense to me. When I was 13, it was the first time I tried marijuana. Okay? 
I was super young, and I've seen him younger, eight years old, smoking weed. It wasn't me. I wasn't that bad. But I was still 13 years old. Uh, the first time I smoked weed was when I was, you know, in my house. Somebody, a friend of mine, had texted me and said, you know, hey, come on, let's hang out. I got something I want to show you. Uh, just come on, let's hang. He was also kind of a dope. So, you know, he's the kind of guy that you, you just don't understand what's going on up here. He would sit, look out a window, and start to swirl and laugh. Okay? Not because of, you know, anything significant. He was just kind of a moron. But I went over there and I said, So, what's up, man? What you got to show me? He was like, Hey, man, I got this fire. I got this flame. This whoop, whoop. What are you talking about? Are you okay? Should I call your mom? Should I call a doctor? He's like, no, man, look at this. Look, look. I threw out this little baggie, this green stuff in it. I was like, oh, so this is weed. And I was, you know, thinking, okay, so this is weed. He was like, yeah, man, take some, man. We're going to roll up a joint. We're going to spark up. I was like, no, no, thank you. I see how you are. I don't want to be nothing like you. You know, I'm telling you, this guy was brain dead. All right? He would drive into a parked car. That's how stupid this man was. Okay? Uh, he was like, "Well, come on, man. It, it makes you, it makes you happy." I was like, "Well, I'm already pretty happy, and I was about to eat me some pizza, so I was about to get happier." <laughs> okay. Well, it makes you sleepy. I was gonna take a nap. I was already be sleepy. Well, it makes you hungry. I was like, "Look at me, dude. I'm always hungry. I don't need any more of that in my life." Okay. Anyway, like a dummy, not listening to my parents, I tried it. All right, I tried it, led me on a long uh, five, six years of trying different stuff. At one point, even tried it in that stuff, Spice. Anybody heard of Spice? Okay. Oh, my goodness. I almost died. Almost got run over by a car and almost eaten by a pack of wolves that I thought I saw. All right. It was had some horrible stuff. I remember coming home. My mom got me a, a this Mexican sandwich. We call them torta. All right, with this big, huge sandwich. And I started to eat it, and I was like, oh my God, there's worms in the sandwich. I look, and there's nothing there. Then I look in the mirror, and I got worms in my mouth. You know, I wake up with this killer headache going from my spinal cord down to my butt. You know, it, it was just a mess, okay? Anyway, let's get out of here. It's bad memory. Is that it? No, it's not it. That's not the point. All right. Uh, the Daily Mail reports marijuana does risk uh, does raise the risk of schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It raises the risk of schizophrenia and triggers heart attacks, according to the most significant study on the drug effects to date. A federal advisory panel admits cannabis can almost certainly ease chronic pain and might help some people sleep. Might, okay. It dismisses most of the other drugs supposedly medical benefits as unproven addictions. Crucially, the researchers concluded that 